Hey everybody and welcome. So Leachy sent me their high-powered uh, battery power station. So let's uh, talk about the differences and then we'll put it together. This is my first peek at it. So this unit has a 2000 watt inverter with a 2500 watt surge. Uh, it has a 20 amp solar charge controller with Bluetooth, which is a great upgrade. You've got the typical USB ports and 12 volt cigarette sockets in the front. And like their other product, this is a bring your own battery. So you see here in the back, I've got a wise 100 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate that I'm going to put inside here. We're going to power it up and see what we think. So to get into this thing, you've got some screws in the back. And there's this tray that comes out that you put the battery in, strap it down and slide it back in. And here is your battery terminals. And these are huge. This is like, oh, okay, it's two gauge. So these are quite beefy. And just looking at the internal construction, you can see it's got a nice shunt in there. I can see the solar charge controller, which I know is OEM from somebody else. So uh, overall, build quality is pretty basic, but uh, not bad. And if you look really deep down inside there, there's actually a backup fuse for the 12 volt and USB. It's a blade fuse in case something shorts out. So that's a nice touch. It'd be nice if it was uh, externally accessible, but uh, it's a nice little add on there for some protection. So we've got this. Battery tray with some straps to hold it into place, which is nice. Problem number one, the included straps don't fit really in a logical manner. So we've got the battery strapped up. We're going to slide it back in and connect the battery terminals and turn it on. <clears throat> Okay, problem number two. All right. Well, that just barely fits in there. That is terrifying how tight that is with the positive battery terminal being right up on a metal plate like that. Oh, that's mortifying. Yeah, it clears, but not by a whole lot. Wow. You absolutely need to use those insulators on the battery and absolutely need to bolt this thing down. That, that's disconcerting. Okay, we got the battery installed, so let's turn it on and uh, see what happens. Let's do a very simple test. Hey, look, we've got the AC is working. Cool, great. So we've got a watt meter in the front that's registering a seven watt phantom load pull, which is weird. Okay, and I've got one of my box fans. I've got one of my box fans plugged into it and it's showing 73 watts minus the seven, so 50, uh, 60 something. That's what I've measured in the past. It's a little high from based on my other testing, but close enough, all right? So it works. Up front, we've got uh, MC Ford Anderson connector to plug it into your solar panel, so standard MC4s. So uh, pretty straightforward. Now let's get to the nitty gritty of this thing. We got it all together and it works. So let me give you my impressions. 
Number one, it is too small, meaning it's not high enough. I'm, I'm really nervous about putting that battery in there. I mean, the amount of clearance between the top of the battery terminal and the mounting plate was like a quarter of an inch. You've got to use that strap and you've got to use those covers because if that thing jostles at all, it'll short. Man, that, that was really scary. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's sort of bigger than it needs to be. The, the, the tray mechanism just adds a lot of bulk that doesn't really kind of need to be there. It's just for something of that capacity of only like 1200 watt hours, which is a big unit, but it's it, it, a big capacity, but the unit's a lot larger than it kind of needs to be, but I'll come back to that. So here is my primary gripes, that it's too expensive, and let me clarify. So the unit, the shell by itself is $438. That's no battery, no solar, no AC charger, okay? So then if you want the char a 20 amp charger, they'll sell that for you to you for another 60 bucks. So now you're about $500 with no battery. Now this is going to get technical here. The inverter is rated to 2000 watts or 2500 watts peak, but it only has one receptacle. Now US receptacles are typically rated to 15 amps, which is about 15 to 1800 watts. So you're not going to be able to utilize that other 800 watts because you may end up burning out that outlet. You need to have at least two outlets to get over 1500 watts. So you plug your refrigerator into one side and all your other necessities into the other. So they, by increasing, you don't gain anything by having a bigger inverter in there because you, I don't think that you can safely utilize it. Here's the other problem, going back to cost, is if you go onto Amazon and you buy the cheapest lithium iron phosphate battery that you can, which is a Chins or a, like the, the Ys that I just bought was $260. I could have bought a Chin for $240, but I wanted to get it faster. Those will surge to 100 amps, but it only for like 10 seconds. So you can do peak for your refrigerator, but they're not supposed to be constantly drawn over about 50 amps. So that's about five or 600 watts. So to fully, if you really want to fully utilize that 15 to 2000 watt, you need to buy the higher powered battery, the special 100 amp BMSs that can consistently put out 100 amps or you know 1500 watts or more. Well, those batteries are more expensive. They're 350 to 400 dollars depending upon what brand. So if you take the 500 dollars for the base unit. Uh, with the AC adapter, plus another $400 for a higher powered battery, you're at $900 for a unit when you could buy an EcoFlow Delta for right at $1,000 that's in a smaller package that also has a better charge controller and has more AC outlets. So they've really kind of hobbled themselves by putting a bigger inverter in there because they raised the price but didn't build the unit to be able to utilize that. What I really wish they would have done, and I sent the company an email on this, is I wish that they would have made the unit longer to accept a 200 amp hour battery, like this. Those have larger BMSs in them by default and I can get bigger capacity. So. In, in short, this bigger unit suffers from a lot of design flaws. So I'm going to say, I think you ought to skip this one. The smaller unit, which I did the review on previously, I think is great because it's that, that right balance of cost and features. And also, it's really easy to put together. You take the lid off, you drop the battery, and you put the lid back on. This thing, in an attempt to make it look better, made it more complicated and in my opinion more dangerous because of how tight it is and they made the inverter bigger without thinking their way through how it would be used so uh thanks for watching and i hope you enjoyed this and please uh, drop a comment down below thanks